Good morning, good morning. How are you? Happy Thursday. So it's 10.30. This is our regular weekly catch-up session. So while you are just getting your notifications to tell you I'm live, as you hop on, please say hello. Um, tell me where you are. What's the weather doing? It's actually dry again here. So I trotted out this morning for a little very slow run very slow it was but i still feel like i'm rosy cheeks i've tried my best morning deborah and i've now got that like really annoying <clears throat> tickle thing that you get after you've made your lungs work a bit harder than normal um so how are you doing have you had a good week i can't believe it's thursday already yesterday horrible rained all day didn't get any fresh air so hence today i thought i'm making the most of it and the forecast for the weekend is awful 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 which means staying in trying to entertain the kids and i'm just going to get rid of that because that's really distracting me so how's your week been tell me tell me um it's been a bit yeah it's been a bit mixed this week i've done um done some great great stuff i'm seeing progress from somebody who's doing some marketing things for me which is really exciting I'm, i can't wait to see where that goes um and i had a very sad evening but it was amazing celebration last night i uh, closed off my one of my academies last night with some amazing ladies who have been with me for uh, 12 13 weeks now and that was our last group coaching session last night uh, for some of them um so yeah it was a bit of a milestone um we went through and reflected on what they've achieved what they've um what they're proud of is the way that I worded it and there was all sorts came out and it was it was brilliant it was lovely to hear that They've, they've moved themselves on both within their business, but most importantly, within themselves and the belief of what they are going to achieve and go on to achieve, which is, is brilliant because that means they've got an amazing stepping stone to take themselves forward. So, yeah, it was really good. I wrote a page of notes around what they what they feel, what their reflections were, which um, morning, Emma, lovely to see you. Um, which yeah, it's it's just been an amazing experience to do with them, and they've been fab. They've been been fully engaged with it, and um, yeah, we'll go on to do fab things. So I'm looking forward to keeping an eye on those. So that was my Wednesday night. Um, okay, so this week we are looking at imposter syndrome, and we're looking at it again. It feels like not that long ago that we covered this, but um, I put a poll out, and it got voted on again. So. There's obviously this this kind of keeps coming up and actually from a personal perspective, it's something which I still do quite a lot of work on and um, I feel as though September sort of brought a trend, oh, we're October now aren't we, oh my goodness yeah 1st of October, pinch punch and all that, um, October, uh, September brought for me a a transition I think that's the best way to, to describe it um, I sort of knew it was coming I was expecting it to happen once the children went back to school but it brought up all sorts of, of things and I've made some decisions around taking the business forward as well so imposter syndrome absolutely came up for me again so I had to do some additional work on myself and I looked back at the previous session I'd done for you guys on that and thought yeah there's actually I've developed my own um approaches and coping in relation to this and I, I wanted to share so <clears throat> excuse me if I cough a lot it is that if I haven't run in about eight weeks which is dreadful to admit but I've now got that really tickly like I've kind of been breathing really really hard for like half an hour so a little bit gravelly today a little bit um Mariella Foster <clears throat> right so first let's be clear that we're all in the same place and let's talk about how imposter syndrome looks because it's one of those really sneaky, um, are we calling it an emotion? I guess a, a state of mind, it's a state of mind and when it shows up it's, it's often cloaked in something else and that almost can mean that we don't necessarily recognise it for what it is. And as we go through this this concept, um, it'll come out more. If, by the way, you watching on the replay, please comment, please say hello, um, ask any questions you've got on this subject and I will get to the comments. Uh, ladies, if you want to comment while we're live, then of course, please do. That always feels better. Um, and if you've got, if you know you, you've had experience of, of imposter syndrome, then you know, how does it show up for you? Do you do you know it as as a definitely this is this is me feeling imposter syndrome, or 
have you just got this sort of vague sense that there's something just feels a bit mm, and therefore you're finding ways around it or, or are you quite conscious of it kind of tell, give me give me a gauge as to whether or not that's that's that features in your your own sort of personal awareness no no judgment you know good or bad I I haven't even heard of this concept probably um until I was well into developing the business and yeah it just doesn't come up in corporate you don't really talk about it because um those that are probably experiencing it are probably at a level where they're maybe being mentored and they're, they're kind of working through this stuff so you don't overly you don't reference it particularly at all in a corporate environment uh deborah mindset that keeps you rooted and stuck in unhelpful limiting beliefs old stories yeah yeah they don't apply to where you are now or who you are now yeah i think that's true i think it can certainly be attempting to keep you stuck for sure so i've got four four ways that i i oh there's lots of you suddenly joined um please say hello if you are now joining um so we're talking about imposter syndrome i'm going to do three things what it looks like first because we need to be able to know it's there first thing about any of this stuff if you know it's there you can kind of go all right okay right now i can work through it so we're going to do what it looks like what the impact of those feelings might well be and then i've got it on my phone my notes on my phone today um and then of course what you can do about it because being able to move yourself forward is the key to, to obviously your success so the first and the big one for me that this, oh, Emma, sometimes you're aware of it, but for you, it can come out as overwhelmed procrastination. Yes, perfect. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm absolutely the same. Certainly procrastination. And that's not necessarily me um, as a natural, but yeah, I totally get, get those as well. <coughs> okay, so the first one. And um, this, this sort of slightly made me smile um, because of discussions I was having outside of, of what I was working on my, myself. Tanya, hi, lovely. So the first one is, you believe that your success that you've already had, so anything that you might have already achieved in your past, is due to luck. Not as in how you look, as in L-U-C-K. I've got friends that take the mickey out of me for the fact that I say look and look is the same. Like They are the same. Depends where you come from. So it, it, your success previously is due to good fortune so you've just been lucky and there's times when things have happened this kind of events have conspired in your life to offer you an opportunity and therefore you say oh that was just lucky or yeah I landed that job because I was lucky or this opportunity presented itself because I was lucky and oh sorry wobbling you around and I think we we end up if we believe that at the time it happened then that story of whatever that event was, whatever that opportunity was, becomes rooted in our history. So we, if we're retelling, oh, you know, how did you get that opportunity? Or how come you went into that role? Or how come you did that? Or why did you decide, I was just lucky. I fell into this role when blah, 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 blah. And we've probably all at some point heard ourselves say that word, I was just lucky, or it was luck. So that is your first, I guess, a little red flag. So if you're one of those people that says, yeah, I'm just lucky or I don't really know how or why. Yeah, I'm just just one of those people that falls on my feet. If you're if you're regularly hearing yourself say things like that, then that could be the start of the seed of some of this stuff. Who says that to themselves? Are you going to admit it? Uh, Deborah, thoughts of who who am I to think I can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who do you think you are too? Yes, totally. Yeah, really good examples. Okay, so the second one, so your first one is that you feel lucky for all the positive or the opportunities that you've had, the success that you might have had, maybe the doors that have been opened, the relationships that you've landed yourself in the past. It could be all sorts. Let's not just, you know, this doesn't just turn up when you're talking about business. So the second one is that, it's that second one, uh, it's that um, that point that you've just made, your second point, Deborah. Who, who am I to think that I can this? So imagine you were walking into a room full of fellow whatever it is you do and you walk in and you feel like a total fraud, a total alien, a total like, I don't fit in this, in this, in this space, I'm not worthy of even mixing with these people, I'm not, I can't this, I shouldn't be pretending that I'm this. All of those, all of those feelings of doubt and of, 
almost criticizing your own expertise, even though actually you've got lots of proof that you're, you have that expertise, you still feel that sort of sinking feeling of I'm not able to, to hold my own in this field of other people who are clearly operating. So what, what um, the, other, the other element to this, which, which I really like, is that you, you almost have like a, an admiration, maybe not as far as that, but a, a, yeah, I kind of, I don't know the word that you'd use, almost like a, you, you hold certain people in such high regard because they're doing the thing that you want to do and you, you sort of elevate them. But actually, the truth of it is that they're not that million miles away from you, but you've ended up kind of going, oh, they're amazing, you know, they're doing this, they're doing this, they're achieving this, they're achieving this, and I'm not, I'm not able to do that. I'm not at that place. I'm not ready. I'm never going to. And, and you almost have that, yeah, like that adoration of, wow, you know, they're, they're where they want to be. And, and yes, clearly there are some people that have been doing their thing for years and they, they've built huge kind of massive followings and they've got big businesses behind themselves but it's that it's, there's a difference between somebody that's just ahead of you and you're admiring them as opposed to the the great big you know that you know you're not going to suddenly go oh I'm I'm in Tony Robbins league I don't think any of us are going to be able to get there in this lifetime are we but but it's those people that are pretty close to you and often it can take somebody to say but you're just as good as them or what you do is just as valuable or you're better or you do this much much more in a much more skilled way but you you've almost got that that sort of person that that you've you've separated yourself from because you believe they're a million miles ahead of you feeling out of your depth yeah and the comparison thing comes in in that in that sort of adoration i'm not there because that person's there i'm never going to be there because i'm sort of down here somewhere so never feeling like your your field of expertise is strong enough to let you you know, if all these people were sitting around a dinner table and you were invited to join the conversation, you'd almost be feeling like, well, I've got nothing to say. I have nothing to give to this because they're all amazing. And what have I got to give? So it's that self-doubt. It's that self-doubt piece. So that's the second one. And then the third one, which I think almost wraps up the first two, is that you shy away from any recognition, like any. And this creeps into other areas of your life as well. So if you if someone does compliment you on something that you do and it is your field of expertise it's your field of of, of your your superpower then you're almost in that oh no 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 you know that's just a that I don't, I don't I don't think anything of that or don't be silly you know that whole brushing the compliments away thing so the recognition that someone wants to give you just feels just like wrong and, and like why on earth would they be saying that and I'm not comfortable with them giving me that compliment because I don't deserve it. Why would I deserve it? Because what we said in the first two, well, everything that I've achieved in the past, it was just lucky. I haven't done anything to achieve that. And also I'm not in the league of being able to, um, to even consider myself at that, at that level. So I can't take a compliment because that's, that's not right. Is it? it? I can't. So the first two almost lead to the third. Uh, never considered the elevation factor. You do that. The comparison. No, the the shy away from recognition. Is that what you mean, Emma? Um, yeah, telling you the, the elevation thing. Yeah, I think we all do it. And you know what? It's great to have like a person that you admire because of what they've achieved. But I, I just, I want you to just check in on whether or not actually that person is a million miles away from you because they can give that impression they are, but maybe they're not. And actually once you've got yourself established a bit more you've done a little bit more self-development that you could easily get to where they are so comparing is dangerous quite often more often than not but having a having almost like a role model for the positive reasons can be can be really really positive comparing yourself and putting others on a pedestal that you yeah yeah it is it's almost like that oh look at them they're untouchable and they're going to be amazing and I'll never ever get ever, ever get to that point that's a very different comparison than saying, look at how amazing that person is. I'm going to get there. And almost using it as a, yes, you know, that's, that's where I want to be. That's what I want to be doing. It's, it's, it is a different feeling towards them. Um, so Emma, yeah, you're saying you shy away from recognition. Brush off the compliments. So this falls into other areas of our lives, for sure. So we're, as women, 
it's more often than not men don't tend to be well i don't think men compliment each other quite to the same level do they but it's it, it comes into all sorts you know be it oh you look nice today or oh that dress is lovely and how many times have you have you either given a compliment or you've received something and then you just go oh this old thing i just chucked this on found it in the back of the wardrobe when the truth is actually you spent a goodly long time planning your outfit and doing your hair and trying to make yourself feel a little bit better but you do you just exactly that and then brush off the compliments because you don't feel that 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 recognition of whatever it was is justified so the, the, this with everything it's like it's like we always say how you do one thing is how you do everything and this piece about recognition is a great place to start because we can do it in other fields of our lives as well so being able to being able to take the compliments on anything like that was a really nice meal you cooked or um you look really happy today you're you're you've you've made me feel better whatever it is whatever the compliment is take it learn to start taking them in thank you very much that's really kind of you to say do you know what as well the person who gave you the compliment feels so much better for that as well it all can get a bit awkward if you and and some of you will have done this where you've given a compliment to some somebody and they've just gone oh, oh, oh and they've brushed it off and almost brushed your com comment aside that person feels as though it's fallen on deaf ears. So they now feel a little bit rejected by what they said. And it, it was probably almost always that they were being kind and you know, taking it back into the business context. People don't compliment and, and, and lift you and tell you that you're good at what you do for no reason at all. There, there will be absolutely guaranteed there is a reason for them saying that. They're not saying it to try and get you then to compliment them particularly not in a business case. So you have to learn to start accepting these compliments in every walk of life because as soon as you start accepting them more readily, more easily in one element, suddenly it becomes easier to accept and to acknowledge them in your business persona as well. Uh, which I think, no, you could have, no, Emma, boastful is certainly not a word that I would use for you, Emma, no, for sure. Especially not given that you have so much natural talent as well. Um, okay, so that's the third one. So you're shying away from recognition. Um, and remember, these are, the reason I've identified these is because of the, the way that imposter syndrome might just creep in without you realising. And um, there's some really obvious ones like the, oh, I just feel like a fake, I feel like a fraud. I'm scared to put myself out there because people will realise that I'm pretending to be what I am attempting to be. That's the really obvious one. But some of these are more sort of deep seated and, and as I say, they can spread into other areas of your life, which is why we're talking about just these four. I've got one of those annoying hairs again. Okay, so the, all of those three that we've just talked about, you uh, believe that everything you've done so far is down to luck. You feel strongly that you don't uh, belong in your field of expertise. And then the final one, you won't take any recognition. The final, final one is that actually all of those things combined can lead to a level of anxiety. Now, anxiety has got... Suzanne, hi, lovely to see you. <laughs> That's fine. Don't, please don't apologise for being late. Um, you, you've got all of those other three and then the anxiety can kick in. Now, anxiety is used in, in relation to all sorts of feelings. Of course it is. And there is a, a range of anxiety, you know, going from seriously kind of almost clinical to the feeling a bit just mm, not great about that. So... It could be anywhere on that on that spectrum and it could be on a permanent basis. It could be like a little moment of, oh, I feel a bit funky about this and then it's gone again. Or it could be something that you're literally living with every day, day in, day out, day in, day out. But all of those are going to ultimately just lead, lead to you feeling ill at ease, feeling like you know that there's action you know you can take. You know that there are steps that you want to, to go through to move your business forward but you're not able to because of this this kind of like sinking feeling. And I, I feel my emotions very central to me. Um, Zosha's not on live. She's going to catch us up, but I know Zosha will have a view on that. But I, I hold all my emotions in my, um, in my core. So like in my stomach and, and, and sort of chest. So if I get any feeling of, of anything to be honest excitement nervousness um 
anxious, then I literally feel it here, which is why when I talk about anxious, I'm kind of touching my, my tummy. But we all know what that does, whether it inflates your heart rate a little bit, it makes you go a little bit like, there's a level of anxiety that we're living with when we're trying to probably take action because it's, it's that pulling you back thing. So we've talked about all those four. So what you've achieved so far is down to look. You feel strongly that you don't belong within your field of expertise. You shy away from recognition. This can show up in other areas. And ultimately, all of those feelings combine to be able uh, to... Sorry, I was reading that comment at the same time. To um, lead you with a level of anxiety. And, and that, of course, can be on any level because ultimately it can lead you to total inaction and really just letting everything closing in on you. Uh, you do too. Stomach churning, butterflies, tight chest. Yes. Here we are, kindred spirits, Deborah. Your tummy's like, you feel, oh, isn't that weird? Do you know, I've not put that on my ideal client. The amount of work I've done recently, um, because I've got somebody helping me with my marketing, the amount of work I have had to do around my ideal client, which makes me smile because it's like, it's the first thing that I get everybody to work through. But do you know what? I'm going to put that, going to put that in. That there's a, there's a connection there, isn't there? Because it is, it's like a real, it is a physical thing for me. Um, and for everything, I get it for good stuff as well. If I get excited, I'm like, oh, I can't eat, I can't drink. I feel like, oh. <coughs> you often feel like imposter syndrome presents as disappointment and sadness, berating yourself. Okay, that's interesting. So almost like a... Like a sort of self... Um, no, no, what's the word? Almost like you're kind of put, telling yourself off for um for not trying to this this and this yeah I th yeah it may that may be the just a, a kind of gremlin to stop you moving forward I think um let's talk about how it can be how it can show up because this for me is what kind of flipped the switch in my head and went yeah actually this is me almost in the anticipation of failure yeah could be yeah I'll do a client totally okay Right, so what can be the impact of all these feelings then? What can it do for you? So the obvious one is fundamentally it's going to hold you back. Now, holding you back can mean a whole heap of different things. It can mean that you don't take action. It can mean that you don't post the post that you're supposed to do on social media. It can mean that you don't put yourself out there in a way that you know is taking your message to the world and to your ideal client. It could even mean that you don't want to sit and do your work for the day. It might mean that you don't want to get out of bed and move yourself forward because you're just feeling crippled by this, but I'm not I'm not who I say I am and, and this has now sort of taken me over. So again, there are degrees of this and how it shows up. But ultimately what this will always lead to, because we're talking about this in the context of our businesses, is that financially you are not going to be where you want to be. You what you, what you want to have is that successful business you showing up, serving your ideal clients, doing your thing, sharing your expertise, but all the time you've got this stuff going on in the background. So ultimately, financially, you will be being impacted in some way. Now, there are lots of causes that sit underneath this, and they are probably going way, 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 way back into your childhood, some of them, around the confidence that you've got in yourself, the confidence you have in your abilities. But what I will say is everybody experiences this. And I think on some level, if you know, even the, the most successful people will have had a level of feeling this. And the reason we do is that when we move ourselves on, we we sort of get challenged, don't we? We we challenge ourselves to do something different, to feel something different, to to attempt to step into that. Um, there was there's a great, great thing that that I did see years ago that sticks with me. And, and I won't be able to remember the, the full quote, but it's almost around um, those who those who have got to be really, really successful don't necessarily know all the answers to the stuff. They've just got really good at winging it. <coughs> and it is, it's that, it's that almost, okay, so this isn't a new situation for me and I'm putting myself into this place, but do you know what? I'm just going to use all, everything that I've already got from my past and I'm going to push myself forward anyway. And it's that, <clears throat> it's that battle that we have around, well, is it enough to hold me back or is it a case of being able to give it a nod and move forward regardless and push through anyway? 
So this could go back years and years, I said that. Um, it can be relating to money, relationships, and a whole host of other things can come into play as well. So what, what, I'm, what I guess what I'm trying to say is this is fine. You know, this is totally normal. It can come up for every type of person at every point in, in their lives, no matter what point you're on in terms of your development, in terms of the success of, or otherwise of your business. It can come up at all sorts of points and things can trigger it for all sorts of reasons as well. But almost all of them will result in you not, not feeling comfortable enough to charge your worth. So this might start to feel a little bit, mm, and this for me is where I really got the, oh heck, yeah, this, this started to resonate. So when you're first starting your business and you're creating your offer, and I I very much advocate having like a single offer and a way that you can take your clients from a place where they don't necessarily want to be, which is their dark place, to their light place, and you have something that sits in the middle, which is you and your offer. Now, when you're creating that offer, you need to price it. Everybody needs to price it. We need to know how much you're going to charge. What is it? Tanya, hi. Um, you need to know what what that value is of you in the middle <clears throat> and often this is where we struggle and this is where this for me particularly turns up in the most obvious way so what we can end up doing is saying well um what will what will a client want to pay and we sort of start with the client and then we, we sort of say right well what what else is out there and let's draw some comparisons to what are those people charging and what are those people charging Instead of just standing in our own power and saying, this is the value that I'm going to be delivering to this person. This is a transformation that they're going to achieve. This is all the expertise that I'm going to be sharing with them, how I'm going to be developing and the, the way that they're going to benefit from the thing that I'm going to deliver them. We don't come from that place, do we? We come from the, oh, maybe those prices are a bit high. Maybe I should drop that. Maybe I shouldn't charge that. And then all of a sudden, the price that you might have wanted to have charged has halved. The other way this can happen is like constantly negotiating your pricing as well. So almost, um, well, if I charge that, then 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 maybe that, that won't bring enough people. So if I charge this down here, then maybe I'll get more people for that price. And therefore, I'll, I'll still achieve the same amount ultimately as the outcome. Rather than staying in that positivity of... I know my worth, I know the value that I'm going to give. My gosh, the sun's just come out and I'm getting blinded off my car. <clears throat> Rather than staying in that place of, I, I totally own my power, I know the value I'm going to give, I know the benefit that those people, person is going to, to achieve from what I'm going to help them with, we end up just kind of recoiling and going, oh, I could, I could reduce it, I could this, I could the other. That, for me, is the one that resonated most with me like um yeah it just kind of hit the spot because i i know that i do that i know that i want to help as many people as i can possibly help and i will therefore undersell and that means all sorts of things for me and the business and and actually the the type of people that are wanting to work with me it changes that as well so that for me was the biggie as to almost like my red flag because Yes, I've had, I've had, and, and I've shared this in the past. So when I, um, I can't remember which challenge it was, but I did some advertising around a challenge once and, and suddenly had a big influx of people registered. Woke up one morning to see how many were, um, had registered their interest to get involved in the challenge and had a little bit of a, oh my gosh, who am I to sit here and attempt to share this stuff? Why are they going to listen to me? I bet no one will turn up. It's just going to be so uncomfortable. They're going to come in and the ones that will turn up will criticise me. And I properly had that that total, almost like not quite a meltdown in a like severe level, but like a real, I can't do this. Like I don't want to do this. I'm not ready. So it, it does, It can all sorts of things can trigger you. And, and this one for me around, I'm not charging my worth look at the benefit people are getting, look at the way that you can transform people's lives, look at all the amazing things that, that they're going on to do after they've worked with you. That seemingly wasn't enough for me to then be able to feel as though I was charging my worth. I was then ended up unpicking it all and going, yes, but I want to be as accessible as possible. And they're just stories that you create in your own mind. 
So uh, that's your that's your area, the finance one, Emma. And I guess when there's an hourly rate um, sort of doing the rounds in terms of what you do, that that, that adds an, a different element to it as well. But just because you're operating in a a perceived feel of an hourly rate industry does not mean that you have to charge an hourly rate. Um, I've just uh, reflected with a couple of people who similar. They would have been in a, in an environment where people were charging by the hour, and they've totally moved away from that. Which means you you kind of go from I'm not playing in in that field anymore. I'm playing over here. This is my offer. This is the way that we're going to work together. And the hourly rate sort of almost like comes out of it. So there are ways and means of, of moving away from that time versus money calculation that people often want to do to justify their existence. <coughs> so what can you do? Are you also with? <clears throat> is this making sense? Is this good? My flowers are dead. They're totally dead. The irises. Did my husband get me them last week? Yeah, I think they were open straight away. And the, the, the purple ones are dead as anything. And the blooming carnations haven't even opened yet. Okay, so what can we do about it? Because this is the most important step. We've, we've recognised it. We've seen some perhaps more subtle places it's showing up, like our lack of recognition and not being able to take those in. Um, and we know that actually, ultimately, all of that stuff is going to lead to us not charging our worth, not being where we want to be with our business and getting, continuing to get in our own way and not being able to take ourselves forward. So first thing is the recognition. As we've said, you need to know that there is something afoot other than just you're feeling a bit funky and it'll pass in time because it won't. Not without some work, not without making reference to it and starting to, to to take some of these steps to actually work through it it will just stay there forever and it can get bigger and it can get more dominant over what it will want you to do and it is just like the kind of the unruly pet that you've got in the house that actually you can find ways around stuff but ultimately it's still going to be there controlling you unless you can take some steps to try and get it in check and and get back under control with it so addressing it is tough because it will depend for you how it's how it's actually manifesting itself. Now, it could be that let's go back to the financing because that's sort of the most tangible way. So what if we finished here and you went, right, OK, so the financing is the biggest thing for me. I need to address this. What I'm going to do is double my pricing. There we go. I've done it. I've doubled my prices. The reality of that is you won't actually achieve it because you won't stick to it. You'll you'll end up having all of those inner noises going, oh yeah, but that's there's no point in that. So you might change all your pricing on your website, but then when someone rings, you'll end up going, oh yeah, well, um, you know, I'll do a special deal for you, and and then you, you kind of devalue yourself again. So that, from a practical perspective, won't it won't be enough. It won't it won't totally get rid it'll just mask for a small period of time so addressing it in terms of actually being honest with yourself truly being honest what is the effect that how I'm feeling what is it doing to my life is it meaning that I'm holding myself back is it meaning I'm not taking an action in the way that I want to do because if you know how it is stopping you then you can start tackle, tackling those things one at a time. It might be that it's stopping you raising your prices. It might be that it is simply stopping you doing a Facebook Live or going on, on to um, a group and sharing your views onto a, on a, your particular chosen subject. It might be that it is stopping you just taking that one by one by one by one action because you don't feel that you can, you should, you're justified in doing it. But, it, it, you know, knowing what it's what it's stopping you doing is your first step to saying, OK, so I'm not doing that thing because of this. And and it's this is the hard stuff, as I've always said, it's unpicking these little things of <clears throat> I'm not doing that. But why am I not doing that? What's stopping me doing that? OK, right. So today it might be this. Today it might be, I might just be feeling in a bit of a funk. So I'm not motivated to, to do my post. But actually, is there something underlying? So addressing exactly what effect it's having on you, your life and progress, progress of your business is your second part. Then you need to decide, and I, I use this word very, very consciously, you need to decide how much of a thing this is. And I mean that not flippantly, like is this so big 
you are going to let it stop you. Like, is this crippling you? And are you going to make yourself ill in your attempts to deal with it, particularly on your own? Or is this just like an irritation, you know, it's there and you're going to be able to move on and move past it anyway? <coughs> I'm annoying myself with my croaky voice. Now, only you know, but there is a... You might feel different on a day-to-day -day basis, but there is going to be an overriding feeling generally of how big a thing is this actually and how big a thing am I going to let it be? So there's a, there's a whole thing around actually is my mission bigger than my mayhem and I like that phrase because mayhem can be all sorts of things, can't it? It might be your procrastination, it might be your fears, it might be your disorganisation, it might be just just the chaos that is around your life. Actually, is your mission and what you're looking to achieve, so that's going back to your goals, the purpose of what you're wanting to do, the reason, your why, it is always your why, your mission is your why. You know, is it to, to regain some freedom? Is it to financially secure yourself? Is it to help those that you want to serve? Whatever your mission is and your mayhem, you can almost like put them on two sides of the page can't you and say okay so this is my mission these are my goals versus this is the stuff that's getting in the way and your imposter syndrome and how that's showing up will sit on your mayhem side but you decide how big is this is it big enough to stop me and when you see the two actually written down and, and you're comparing them does that help does that make you go yeah I need to probably just kind of check in with why this might be stopping me because look at the stuff on this side that is my mission and how I'm touching all the people's lives that I want to help versus yeah I'm probably just need to work through this stuff and it's going to feel I'm going to, I'm going to feel some resistance along the way but that's okay because my mission is bigger so absolutely deciding how big your thing is for you and and working through it working through it consciously be it through journaling be it through just sitting and doing that exercise of okay I'm going to run, remind myself of why I'm doing all this stuff and doing it regularly, just sort of calling yourself out and go, oh, look, the imposter syndrome's come up again. Just doing it once in a blue moon is not going to do it because this stuff eats away at you day by day by day. So it's, you need to counter it day by day by day and work on it on a really, really regular basis, which is why something like journaling, even for 15, 20 minutes a day, is really valuable because you can set an agenda for yourself to know that you're working through something and you've just got a small amount of time dedicated in your day to say, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm concentrating on today. So that was number three. Decide on how big it is. Number four, this is my favourite. You need to go and gather evidence. Like a little Miss Marple. You need to go and find all the reasons that you are amazing. All the reasons how you're helping people. All the reasons why actually... You know all those roles that we said previously, oh, I was just lucky to land? Go and find some evidence that says you weren't. Go and find the evidence that says when you did get that job that you were lucky to land, how amazing was I in, in that role? How, how much did I step up? How much did I prove myself that I could do it? Because maybe you felt lucky to have got it in the first place, but then you almost had to go all out to then achieve, overachieve the thing that you landed out of luck. I had one of those in <laughs> really early days. So I can't believe I've got this job. I'm going to have to go totally mad with it. <coughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, your evidence might be all sorts of things. It's, it's your proof. It's your proof to banish your doubt. So who are you helping? Who have you helped? Who do you help on an ongoing basis? How can you serve? Who are you serving? What are all your good features? It's like a great big brag file. And it might be on paper. It might be electronic because you're going to include little snippets where people make comments on things that you say or do on social media it might be that you've got stuff that you personally just feel really proud of yourself for having done and you you keep them whatever that file looks like start to collate it because you're going to need it from time to time to go back to so i did a sheet last night with my amazing academy team it looked like this, where I wrote tons of stuff about all the things that people talked to me about. And that was what they were proud of. Now, I'm going to reflect that back to them and make sure that they remember the massive journey that they've been on. But that, for me, is a huge, huge entry into my brag file because I've helped them on that. I've facilitated that. I have, 
I've coached them to get to that point. So it can be it can be something that just makes you feel uplifted. It's just a comment. It, it could be small, but it could be big. Whatever it is, you need to create your file in the back of a folder, in a lever arch file somewhere, wherever. You need to get that evidence for yourself and, and have fun doing it because it should be. You know, think, think way back. Don't just think about your current iteration of you. Go back. Go back in time. Oh, yeah, there was that person that I helped get a promotion because they blah, blah, blah. There was that person that when they first started, they felt really lost and I put my arm around them and really helped them. What about, you, you, you know, your children? Look at the things they've done. Wherever you can get this evidence, go and find it and create that file. Make it as big as you can possibly make it. And the final one is really the, this is your kind of break point. So we've said, you know, is your mission bigger than your mayhem? But now we're going to get into the, so you recognise that it's not, your mission is bigger, you want to do this, this thing, your thing. So now you're going to have to accept that there will be an element of fear to what you're going to do, but you're going to do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Now, that is really easy for us to say. And there are levels, let's be really clear, there are levels of fear which are healthy and will spark you and will inspire you and push you and when you're on the other side, you will feel good for it. And then there's a the fear which absolutely can cripple you and make you ill. So I'm not for a minute advocating doing the latter on a regular basis. But we need to be really rational about this. When we feel fear, as we've said before, it's because of a chemical reaction to our bodies trying to go, you shouldn't be doing that because you're putting yourself at risk at some level. Now, the risk that we often put ourselves in at the moment is a psychological risk. It's a, you're going to have to be brave. You're going to have to find some courage. This feels a bit... Mm, but actually, we're not putting our lives at risk. Not really. We're, we're just challenging ourselves a little bit. So as long as a fear is not going to literally put your life at risk, then I'm, I'm going to say you're probably going to ultimately stay pretty safe. You might feel a bit icky for a while and it might be a, a real, mm, I hated this and I don't like doing it. And But once you've done something once, I can almost certainly guarantee it will never be as bad the second time. Never. It never, never is. So it's about you deciding that final piece. Are you, going, are you going to be able to put yourself in a position where you can feel the fear and do it anyway? Now, you can build up to this. So if your fear is being more visible, this is a common one. So if you just hate going live, you hate doing the videos, you hate seeing yourself on whatever and, and you just, just can't get your head around doing it at all. Then is the, you know find a way to build up to it. Just post more at first. Post a photo. Put put a little bit of text, and post a photo. Smile. And there we go. I'm, I'm visible. They've seen who I am. Build up to it gradually, rather than just suddenly saying, "Oh, I've got to go from here where I'm not visible regularly to suddenly I'm going to have to do lives every day." That's probably too big a leap. But is there a way that you can you can plan for yourself that okay, I'm going to fit. I know I've got fear around this thing, but I'm not going to go straight for the full on marathon. I'm going to go, hence the running reference, I'm, um, I'm not going straight for the marathon. I'm going to start off with running around the block first. So what's my running around the block? Well, is that a appearing with somebody else? Is that a post with a photo? Is that, you know, whatever is, it feels like a, a challenge, but it's run more like around the block. Right now I'm going to go a little bit further. I might do 10K, then I'm going to do a half marathon. And then, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm ready to do it. So you can find a way of... of Feeling the fear of the big thing, but then breaking it down into smaller chunks so that you're making it more manageable for yourself. And throughout all of this, let's not forget that there are some massively, massively high profile people that will admit on a regular basis that they are feeling this fear. But the difference and the thing that separates them from those that, that struggle and continue to struggle with it is this exact final point because they know that it's there they feel the fear, they, they are aware of it, but then they push on anyway. And lo and behold, the worst thing doesn't often happen, does it? It's, it's never as bad as we can, we can create this scenario in our head of, oh, this is just going to be all fun and nothing's ever going to go right again. <coughs> so you've been really quiet for ages. Tell me what you're thinking. Does this make your stomach churn a little or... Does this give you a little bit of structure 
I'm going to write up, <clears throat> and I think as long as you're all on my email list, we're going to get a bit better at writing these up and sending them out afterwards as well. So I'll write up those steps again for you so you've got them all. Um, but yeah, tell me what, and any questions, start dropping them in as well. So let's recap. What does it look like? We said you feel, you feel lucky to have got where you did, the achievements that you've made. Any recognition is always just, well, it was lucky. You feel strongly that you don't um, belong in your area of expertise. You shy away from recognition and all those previous three lead to a certain level of anxiety and therefore a lack of action in, in how you want to be making, making a difference and moving yourself forward. The big one around how it can impact you is that you're not where you want to be. Now, financially, that's um, quite tangible, but ultimately you're not where your business isn't where you want it to be. You're probably undercharging. Um, that's the most common. So you're not able to stand in your power and say, this is the value that I, I present. This is the, the way that I know that I can help people. And therefore, this is the true value of my expertise. And then what can you do? So recognising it's there first off and going, yeah, OK, it's there and it's, it's an emotion that I'm feeling. It's not a permanent state and that actually attempting to ignore something is just going to add fuel to the fire. So you're not you're going to recognise that it is there, how it shows up, when it shows up and to what level it's impacting you. Then you're going to try number two is address it. So talking about it, journaling about it, exploring how exactly this is affecting you on a day to day, month by month basis. How is this impacting you and those around you as well? Decide You decide how big the thing is. Is it, uh, OK, it's just an irritation and I can move past it? Or is your mission and your mayhem exercise worth doing around actually the thing that I want to do is bigger than all the other stuff that's holding me back? So doing that, that exercise, getting your evidence, getting your big brag file around how amazing you are and how many people you can help. Um, and, and just you as a person, you know, don't stick to just your professionalism, just, just everything. Give yourself a kind of massive pat on the back, create yourself a an amazing file of how just amazingly amazing you are. And then the final one is, are you ready to feel the fear and do it anyway? Um, not in one big leap, but what is your fear? What is the thing that where where you know that your imposter syndrome is 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 really l like lurking? Is it is it being visible? Is it being able to write posts? Is it creating a course? What what you know? What is the thing that you know it's it's showing up in most? And how can you break that down to more manageable chunks so that you're not having to go from where you are right now to suddenly all in? That actually there's 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 little steps you can take along the way. Are you not asking any questions or has the chat just gone off? That's it. That is everything I had to share. So any final questions? Any comments? Has that been helpful? As I say, we will write this up and we will share both in the group and on the emails. Nobody's going to say anything. And they all come through at once then when I've finished. Ow, that was my elbow. No, cool. Thank you. They are coming through. Brilliant. Okay, we'll go and have an amazing Thursday. Thank you so much for staying with me and participating. Oh, very helpful. I've done a lot of work to get to the root cause and feeling the fear and doing it anyway has become a regular part of your life. Brilliant. Absolutely celebrate that, Tanya. That's fabulous. And actually, it's never as bad, is it, when you when you do do the thing that you thought was going to be your, your massive fear. It's, it's so rarely as bad. Um, it's odd because sometimes... Things that I think are going to be fine and be like, I'm just not bothered. Sometimes they can just go awfully and I end up going, oh, <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise. But then other things that I've been building up to and, and I've been dreading having to do, they can ne they're never as bad as you think they're going to be. Uh, helpful. Good. Fabulous. Right. I shall leave you to your Thursday. Thank you so much. Go and have a great time and I will see you really, really soon. All right. See you later. Bye.